what you see in the screen here is an Excel file that has data and this is actually from the 2014 and 2015 uh, TCAP exam scores uh, for the state of Tennessee uh, and at school level data and what we see here the uh, if we scroll across I've got several different worksheets here in essence what I had to do is take these data that we see here and get them into a particular form that we can actually bring into uh, SPSS and what I've done is I've separated all the exam results for English 1 TCAP exam and also for English 2 TCAP exam. So the files I want to bring into SPSS and to create separate data sets is first of all the file English 1 clean and then a second data set will be English 2 clean. Now in essence what we'll do eventually then is, is uh, uh, I want to merge these two files together and to do so we need to make sure there is at least one if not two identifiers or variables that are identical in both of these uh, Excel worksheets and you notice here system number and school number are identical to system number and school number uh, in the English 1 clean data. So we'll be bringing these files into SPSS and I'll show you in a moment how to identify then and import into SPSS from this particular uh, Excel file the English 1 data. Now to prepare these data for importing into SPSS you notice what I've done here is I make sure that I only have character information in the two columns where I have the name of the school system and the name of the schools themselves. Everything else you'll notice here is um, um, uh, is numeric information and where there was missing data I've entered in missing data codes of either 999.7, 999.8, or 999.9. Uh, in other situations you may actually have empty cells and that's fine. The SPSS will read those as though they are uh, missing data but I use the uh, numeric code to indicate that there are different kinds of missing data here. You also will notice at the very top where we look at the column headings uh, the very first row contains the variable name that we'll see that we'll use in SPSS. Um, I prefer not to use the variable label and you notice there's only one column in which then the variable name is actually reported so I've stripped everything else away other than variable name and the actual data in this entire worksheet. There should be nothing else in any other cell. So let's get ready to import this into SPSS. So I've gone ahead and opened up uh, SPSS and I'm working with version 25 here and you'll see previous versions uh, operate in much the same way but just a little bit different look in terms of how the importation is done. Uh, I've also closed the Excel file that we had the data in. So what we're going to do to import the information, the data, into uh, this SPSS data set, I'll come up under File, left mouse click to open that up, and we'll come down to Import Data. Now once we move the cursor on top of Import Data, a variety of options comes up. So it can take in information uh, in a variety of different um, file formats, but we have it already in Excel. So I'm going to click on with the rest, left mouse button Excel and you'll notice that uh, it brings up what the most recent folder is that you worked in. I'm going to go back to where I've stored all this information for this tutorial and that's going to be in, uh, let's see, tutorial files. And I open that up, you notice I have the data set right here, uh, TCAP 2014-15 school level and I call this data 2. So it's my modified data. I'm going to go ahead, once I click on that, it, the name then appears in the box next to file name and I'll click open. And now it's telling me what the different options that are chosen, the defaults that are there. Well, one of the issues that, if you recall, there actually were several different worksheets that I had there. Uh, and there's one particular worksheet that contains the data that are cleaned. So I'm going to click on this, this list what is the current active worksheet and it first of all looks at the very first worksheet. I'm going to click on this down arrow, but, uh, this down arrow over here with the left mouse button 
and I'm going to come down and find English 1 clean. That is the file then that has all the clean data and nothing else in it. So it's all ready to be brought into SPSS. And you notice it is identified or found information in cell A1 through to I368. So I'm going to click on that to make then that the file where I want to read. And you notice it displays the information down here uh, that we see that are in that file. So it gives you a little preview of what is actually contained there. Now I've also have the default is to click on read variable name from the first row of data. Recall that the very first row of data I actually had the variable name that I want to use in SPSS. If you only had data in that first row, we would uncheck this. And you notice that once we do that, then the first row of information is treated as though it's data and it just gives generic variable names V1 all the way through to what the highest uh, column is. But I want to read that very first row as the SPSS variable name. So everything looks fine. Uh, down here, that's what I expect, and click OK. And I'm going to take this one output window and resize it for us. So I will try to resize it for us. It's not resizing right now, and I'll work with that later uh, instead of wasting your time. What you notice here is the actual then information uh, in terms of what it has brought into SPSS. So that's the result of the process that was used. Let's go back to the original, uh, to the data itself. And what we have is the variable ta uh, view tab is, is highlighted. So it brought in the variable names and we can click on the data view tab to see what the data look like and the data look just fine for the most part these are the data and they look fine but if we go back to the variable view tab and I even notice something here in terms of looking at the data you notice system number and school number are right justified we see that the text or the character information for system name and school name are left justified but we look at the other numbers also left justified. And also if we look up here, uh, this little sort of a Venn diagram, these three balloons together uh, with the letter A indicate that it's reading these variables as though the character information just like it is with school name and also system name. But you notice school number and system number have a little images of, of um, rulers indicating that these are um, numeric data click back on the variable view tab and what we notice here the variable type system number is numeric system name is string that means character for SPSS school number is numeric and school name is string that's all fine but notice the other information that is actually numeric is being treated as string and the reason for that is when the data was entered into the Excel file uh, by the State Department of Education there was a combination of character and also numeric information in each one of those Excel columns. And so now what we see here, even though we modified that information, uh, SPSS is still not sure what to make of it, so it treats it all as string information or character information. Click on the variable type for the first variable, uh, English1 underscore BB. Click on the blue button, and I want to change this to a numeric variable. Click OK. I'm going to do the same thing here for the next English 1 variable. Now this will only work if we actually do have numeric information. I'll make the next one also numeric, and that is numeric information in these variables. So it can't take character information and create a numeric variable out of it. But now we're saying all we have are numbers, treat those as numbers, not just as other characters. Now what we also notice is there are no decimal places here. And if we go back to our data view window, look at the data, and scroll across, what we notice here then is this the uh, tenth, uh, that one decimal is dropped off uh, for each of our values. If we click on one of the cells, you notice it's still actually there. And you notice that for missing data, it now is rounded up all our 999.7, 0.8, and 0.9 up to 1,000. So it still has 999.7, the data we entered in. It just is rounding everything up because it's not reporting or showing or displaying rather here uh, the um, uh, information 
that is in the first decimal. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to increase each one of these variables to one decimal place. There we go. And we look at the data view window now, one decimal place is, re is displayed. So that's exactly what we had entered in is displaying. It wasn't a problem before uh, when there was no decimal, uh, but I just want to make sure what's in there is exactly what I entered. But you notice we still have, though, these uh, three balloons here, almost like a Venn diagram. But what's changed from what we did before, you notice the letter's not there, that little A that we see over here. That means it treats this as though it is now numeric information, but it still is not treating it as though it is quantitative information. It's a categorical variable the way it's treated right now. Go back onto the variable view window or a tab, and I'm going to change the measure now for English 1, all those variables, from nominal now to scale. And scale is what it uses to refer to in SPSS as a um, variable that is a quantitative variable. And that's what these are. And that will allow us now to perform uh, some analysis that is reserved only for quantitative information. Otherwise, would, we wouldn't be able to perform some of the quantitative analysis on these variables because it would think that it was still would be a categorical variable. So now the data are what we expect it to be, what we want it to be. Go back in the Variable View tab. And now you notice we see that the little Venn diagrams, or three balloons, is replaced with rulers. That's exactly what we want. So now we know those variables are numeric variables. Um, now what I'm going to do now uh, is add variable labels. So I click in the first label for SysNum. I'm just going to simply type in here System Number. Now for SysNM, it's going to be System Name. School no, it's going to be school number. Click for next to school name. Uh, it's going to be school name. Ing1 underscore BB is going to be English 1. I'll put uh, colon percent below basic. The next one, English 1, move that cursor, is percent basic. And then English 1, that's going to be um, proficient, percent proficient. Next is English 1 percent advanced and lastly English 1 percent proficient or advanced okay now we're almost done the only other thing I want to add in here is recall that there were missing values were identified for each one of the exam scores so what we'll do is go over to you know, for the row number five, which is the variable ing1 underscore bb, I clicked on the missing value cell, up came up this blue box, and I have three discrete missing values. So I'm going to click here on discrete missing values. The first was 999.7, the second was 999.8, and the third is 999.8. And I'll click OK. Now, where this may be relevant, what you could do at, at this point is we could then look at uh, a frequency distribution for ing1 underscore bb. And what we would notice is all those values that were 999.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 would be treated as missing data at the bottom of the uh, frequency distribution. But if we look at the other variables and look at their frequency distributions, they would still be treated as valid information. Uh, in terms of computing the valid percent column for the percent distribution. So I could go through here and I want to also have the exact same values treated as missing for these variables. And I could type them in one at a time. But what I'm going to do now though is just simply click where I have it entered, those missing values, copy, 
and now highlight the range where I want to copy it to. Paste. Now for all of these variables what we'd see this information would be treated then as missing data. Now what I need to do is to save the data set and I will come up to the file menu, right mouse, left mouse button to open up that menu, come down to save as, and I will save it as English 1 TCAP uh, data. I'll just leave it at that TCAP, okay? Now all I need to do is click on save and we're all done with this data set.